Good morning. I would like to welcome you to Russian Wind Ministries, our online service. Let's all start off with a word of prayer. Lord God, thank you so much for allowing us to be together. We pray that you would do a work of your grace in our lives and in our hearts. Pray that you would bless those that are watching online. We, uh, we give you honor and give you grace. In Jesus' name, amen. thought it would be a special thing to uh, partake of communion today, so if you have the elements, we're going to pray over them, and we're going to give the Lord thanks for all that he's done for us. Joaquin, would you pray over the bread? 
Heavenly Father, we do thank you, Lord, for the sacrifice that was given for us, for our sins, and for our salvation, Lord God. We praise you and ask, Lord God, that you will bless these sacraments as we get, partake of them and just fill them, Lord God, with your Holy Spirit and fill us, Lord, as we give thanks to you for the wine that represents the blood of Jesus that was spilled on the cross for us and for the bread that represents his body that was broken for us. And we thank you, Lord God, for all that you have done for us for the sacrifice of life, for our life. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Let's partake together. Amen. What a blessed time it is to uh, gather together. You know, this is an unprecedented time in our history, and it will definitely be an Easter that we'll all remember, <laughs> because this is the first one that we've had, that we haven't all been together uh, worshiping the Lord. Church buildings will not have anyone in their buildings on Easter Sunday. We have a scaled-down worship team, and just the... Uh, the message today, typically, this is a time when people are very open to attending a church service and hearing the gospel. But to prevent, to prevent the spread of the virus, churches aren't able to physically meet right now. Yet our all-knowing and all-powerful God can draw us together emotionally and spiritually so that we can still worship him with one heart and with one voice. The Bible says, then will be a choir, not our voices only, but our very lives singing in harmony and a stunning anthem to the God and the Father of our Master, Jesus. That's found in Romans chapter 15, verses 4 through 6. It says, for whatever things were written before were written for our learning, that we through the patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Now may the God of patience and comfort grant you to be like-minded toward one another, according to Christ Jesus, that you may with one mind and one mouth glorify the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for being with us today. We pray that your Holy Spirit would minister to you people, Lord. I pray that your word would come alive to our hearts and our minds, that it would speak to the hearts of those that are able to receive it. And God, I pray that you would hide me behind the cross. We give you thanks that we can gather together today in your name, that we can give you honor, we can give you praise. And again, I pray that you hide me behind the cross of Christ. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You know, the great news is that we can still have Easter services online. So you can watch this service and message. Then you can also share it with your family and friends on Facebook later on. You can email them the link. If you have family members or friends that are not on Facebook, then later this afternoon you can email them a YouTube link that will, be, that will bring it right into their home. But this is also a time to reach out to others who are experiencing fear, anxiety, or even hopelessness. Because of Easter, we all have received hope from God, a sure salvation through Jesus Christ. And now we can help others experience that hope too. Every need in our world is an open door to show God's love, especially during times of crisis, now more than ever. We need to share hope as we live out the great commandment to love one another. God has opened the door for us to be the hands and the feet of Jesus. 
You know, this pandemic cannot stop the church from celebrating the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Easter is the story of the greatest rescue mission in history. God came to earth in the form of Jesus Christ to rescue all humanity. Because of the cross and because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we have the hope of eternal life in heaven. And you know, that is really good news. During our Good Friday message, we saw some interesting things that took place. Judas sold Jesus out for 30 pieces of silver and betrayed him with a kiss. And after Jesus was rested in the garden and he was taken away, his disciples fled. We were also told that Peter followed at a distance. We also see that Jesus went before the high priest and he was later led to Pilate, the Roman governor. Peter denied him three times before the rooster crowed twice, and then Peter went out, repented, and wept bitterly. You know, Judas was also sorry for what he had done, and he went out, but then he hanged himself. Pilate's question to Jesus, who are you? Are you the king of the Jews? Is one that we all must decide. Though Pilate was the judge, he was judged by his decision. Isaiah chapter 53 talks about what Jesus would experience, and it's a very powerful chapter. I want to read this to you. This morning, it says, Who has believed our report? <clears throat> and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form or comeliness, and when we see him, there is no beauty. Then we should desire him. <clears throat> he is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. Then in verse 5, this is one of the very, very powerful verses that says, But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was wounded for our sins. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, we have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who will declare his generation? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgression of my people, he was stricken, and they made his grave with the wicked, but with the rich at his death, because he had done no violence, nor was there any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. When you make his soul an offering for sin, we shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. We shall see the labor of his soul and be satisfied. By knowledge, my righteous servant shall justify many. He shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will divide him a portion with the great. And he shall divide the spoil with the strong. But he poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. You know, also in Matthew chapter 27, I got a couple of verses that I want to read quickly, then we're going to get into the resurrection message. In verse 50, Matthew chapter 27, this is when Jesus was hanging on the cross. It says, and Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. You notice that he yielded up his spirit to God. Jesus chose 
the day, the place, the time in which he would give his life for the sins of the world. Then in verse 51, it says, Then behold, the veil of the temple was torn into from top to bottom, and the earth quaked and the rocks were split. Verse 52 is very intense. It says, And the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the graves after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. So, again, we see that when Jesus died on the cross, that God tore the veil from the top to the bottom. And this veil symbolized the fact <clears throat> that God was unapproachable to sinful man, but the death of Christ made access to God open for every person to enter into. It also tells us that the bodies left the graves after the resurrection of Jesus because he led the saints out of Hades. He set the captives free, as again was prophesied by Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 61. We also found that Jesus was buried in the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea. The women wrapped Jesus up in approximately 100 pounds of spices and linen from head to toe. Pilate told the Roman guard unit to make the tomb of Jesus as secure as they could. And so they made it secure, rolling a huge boulder in front of it. And then sealed it with the seal of Rome, meaning anyone who broke the seal would face death. So now we're going to pick it up in Matthew chapter 28. And this tells us the next morning that he had risen. It says in verse 1, now, after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. His countenance was like lightning and his clothing as white as snow. And the guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. I'll bet. <laughs> Can you imagine the glory of the angel of the Lord sitting upon a rock and glowing? And it says that the guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. They were definitely hiding out. <laughs> In verse 5 it says, But the angel of the the angel answered and said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. As he said, Come see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly, and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead, and indeed he is going before you into Galilee, there you will see him, behold, I have told you. So they went up quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to bring his disciples word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, Rejoice. So they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid, but go and tell my brethren to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. You know, each of the four Gospels gives a different perspective on the events that happened after the resurrection, giving us different information and insights. Matthew was there himself and recorded his personal witness. Mark was just a kid at that time and probably got his information from Peter. Luke came along later and interviewed a lot of eyewitnesses to the event. And John wrote later than the other gospel writers, filling in some of the gaps. He didn't bother repeating what they had already said, but filled in some of the details that hadn't been recorded. And it is possible to harmonize all four of the gospel accounts to see that they are not contradictory. They all fit together like a glove. It's so powerful. 
In verse 11, it tells us, Now while they were going, behold, some of the crowd came into the city and reported to the chief priests of all the things that had happened. When they had assembled together, when they had assembled with the elders and consulted together, they gave a large sum of money to the soldiers, saying, Tell them, his disciples came at night and stole him away while we slept. And if, it, if this comes to the governor's ears, we will appease him and make you secure. So they took the money and did as they were instructed. And this saying is commonly reported among the Jews until this day. There's only one major problem with that, that when Jesus was arrested, his disciples took off. They were out of town. Okay, they didn't want to be anywhere around. In fact, again, it says that Peter followed him at a distance. And that before the rooster crowed twice, he would deny the Lord three times. Very powerful. So again, Jesus was buried in the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea. The woman wrapped him in approximately 100 pounds of spices and linen from head to toe. There was a Roman guard unit who, when they saw the angel, they all fell over <laughs> and with great fear, acted like dead men, okay? Very powerful story. So the, the bottom line is that Jesus rose from the dead. The angel rolled back the stone, we are told in verse two of Matthew 28. The angel rolled back the, the stone from the door of the tomb, not to let Jesus out, but to allow the disciples to see inside that Jesus had risen through the grave clothes. They were a pile of linen, and the, uh, the napkin that was on his head was folded <laughs> properly. Okay, So it's very amazing what took place. And again, the guards were so frightened by the angel, they pretended to be dead. We are told in verse 18 in Matthew chapter 28, we'll begin in verse 16. It says, Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, and, go therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. You know, the Great Commission, Jesus told his disciples that all authority in heaven and earth belongs to him, and on the basis of the power and the authority. He commissioned them to ministry. He told them to go and to make disciples, to baptize and to teach. The mission of the church is to go out and share the message of Jesus, to take his teaching to the world. And you know, it is a great privilege to bear witness to Jesus and to spread his teachings. It may sometimes be intimidating, but we have his promise that I am with you always to the end of the age. And remember the one who is all with you always is the same one who said, all authority has been given to me. You know, the power of death was extinguished when Jesus rose. And Easter is all about second chances. Easter is also for people who feel that God has forsaken them. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever would believe in him have everlasting life. And in John chapter 20, I want to look at verse 26 through 31, because it talks about blessed are those who were there, but even much more blessed are those who have not seen but will still believe, and that's us. In John chapter 20 and verse 26, it says, And after eight days, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas with them. 
Jesus came to the doors, being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace to you. Then he said to Thomas, Reach your finger here and look at my hands, and reach your hand and put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. And Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. You know, that's all of us that have accepted Christ into our hearts. And the, the fact of the matter is that he is risen. He is risen indeed. And you can simply pray to ask Jesus to come into your heart and into your life. He will be with you. He will do a work of his grace in you and through you. And you can also rededicate your life to Christ today if you'd like to do that. Just simply pray with me. Lord God, thank you so much that you died for my sins. God, I pray that you would fill me with your spirit, that you would wash me clean by your precious blood. Do a work of your grace in my heart and in my life. And God, I thank you so much that you've committed eternal life to those who believe in your name. I receive it. I give you thanks for all that you've done. And I, committed, I commit my heart and my life to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You know, folks have asked how they can support the ministry. If you'd like to do that today, you can go to rushingwindministries.org, and there's a donate button there if you'd like to offer up an offering to the Lord or tithe to the Lord. We really appreciate you all, and we want you to know that we love you, and we pray that you'll have a very blessed Easter. Worthy of every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you, oh for you Jesus the name above every other name Jesus the only one that could ever save Worthy of every breath we could ever
guys and gals, thank you so much for joining us today. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May he make his face to shine down upon you. In Jesus' name, God bless. Take care.